So what we're going to have a go with to start with is a turkey rug knot stitch. So creating this sort of fluffy texture here. So just as a practice to start with, we'll do in lines, um, which is easier. And then you can always have a go at doing it in the circle. So I've drawn a line. And if I was working it to the to the edge of something, just come in sort of about half a centimetre and I'm not knotting the end of my fab, uh, my thread. And I'm also um, coming in from the front to the back there. So I'll leave a little tail there. Again, these are going to get cut shorter, but that can vary as well. Sometimes you can cut them right down so they look really fluffy. Um, or you can leave um, a bit more of a tail on them, makes it sometimes easier to sew more of them. So I'm now going to come back to the left, come up from the back to the left of the stitch, like this, and then to the other side of where I came up. So what we're doing is just doing a stitch over where I went in. So then I'm doing it a stitch forward and then come back up where I first went in that little tail. So you can see there I've gone in, I've come up to the left, gone over to the right and then come back up in the center. So what we're gonna do now is the next stitch. What you just will probably want to practice is how far apart you want these stitches. The closer together, the more little tufts you're going to get. So what I'll do now is go over to the right and I'm almost going in as I did for this first stitch here that's got the tail. But from then on, it will be loops that we're left with. So I'm coming over to the right. And if you come in over about, you could almost you could say half a centimetre whilst you're practicing or you can do it less than that, maybe three millimetres. So I'm going in to the line again and I'm coming up at the end of that last stitch. So I'm going into the fabric, coming back. If this distance changes throughout um, and they're not quite accurate, it doesn't matter, you'll still get that effect. So now I'm coming back, but what I'm doing is I'm not pulling it tight, I'm leaving a loop there. So I've got a little loop and then I'm going to go over to the other side of where I went in and come back up into that middle of that stitch. So what this bar stitch across the top is doing is it's anchoring down these tufts. So when they're cut, you can't just pull them out your fabric. This is just a way of anchoring them, anchoring them in. And then you just carry on like that. So now I'll come over, go back to the point of that last stitch. So it ends up as a continuous like back stitch it looks like along the top. Just remember to leave the loop. Don't worry if you pull it tighter, you can just pull the loop back out again. And then you go over that and come back up into the middle there. And that's when we do pull it tight. So it's almost like every other stitch you leave a loop and then the every other of the stitch you pull it tight. So now I go over, come back to the last stitch, leave it as a loop, and then go back into that side and come back up in the middle and pull that tight and then over and back and then anchor that down. When you get to the end of the row, you can then come up back to the middle and this time rather than carrying it on is you just snip the tail. So that's your first row done and then what you can do is work another row. So it is up to you whether you work it above or below. It doesn't really matter. I'll sometimes just sort of push those up and work below it or you can just carry on um, above it. So what you do for your next row is I went in at this point, you're almost now going to stagger them. So if I draw another row 
And again, you might want these really close. To do a practice, you might want to leave more of a gap, but I've done about three millimeters below that there. And what I'm looking for is the point that I go in this time is gonna be staggered so that your loops are sort of offset. So I'll almost be doing the loop bit in the middle there of the, the last one. So if I come in again and go to the left. I'm going to actually do the second row in a different color so you can see there. So I'm just going to go in um, for the first point here from the front, just slightly staggered over. So I'm taking the needle in and going back to the left. And I'm leaving again that little tail. And then I'm going to the right and coming back up to the center there. What you've just got to remember is keep your thread above your needle as well. So now I'll pull that down like so. And then I'm going to go over and back into the last stitch. So I went in at the right, back to the left, and I'm pulling it just enough to leave that loop. And then I'm anchoring it down by going over to the right and back in where I've taken in that loop. Sorry, the top stitches above are getting caught. It is probably easier to work above it each time. Then over to the right, back to the end of the last stitch. Leave your loop and then go over to the right and back in at the center. Like I said, just make sure that your thread goes above your stitch. Over to the right, back to the center, and then just pull it so that there's still a loop over to the right, up to the centre. And again, when you've finished, you just snip it and leave the tuft there, the last little bit. So when you've finished, you just trim the loops to separate them. And then what you can do is trim them down to whatever length that you want. So obviously left longer, it's not so fluffy. It's just sort of like tassels almost. So you can just sort of cut them down really quite short. Um, the squirrel tail that you saw on the handout as well, you can use sort of like a, a toothbrush or something like a brush to then fluff up the stitches even more. <laughs> 